Okay, so welcome back for another GMBN Tech Weekly Show. Coming up on the show this week, got a whole bunch of new mountain bike tech related stuff, including the new 100% range, including their really nice goggles and the really new nice paint jobs of the aircraft helmet. Of course, there's all the regular stuff and a really, really cool tool to show you. First up, we're gonna jump straight into tech news and there's a whole bunch of stuff racked up here to tell you guys about. So the first one I heard about this week is a new 100% range. So 100% are really famous for their goggles. They make some of the nicest goggles on the market with a really cool mud flap design and their own tear off system. But they've got a new hydromatic glove coating system. So they've got this on the brisket and another model of the glove. It's a waterproof glove with a windproof membrane in the back. Really nice bit of kit if you're riding it, obviously in wet conditions and cold conditions. But the thing I really like in their range for 2018 is the new colorways of the aircraft helmet and the status. So the aircraft is the carbon fiber downhill helmet. I guess you could use it for enduro racing as well. Very lightweight, used by riders like Luke Bruni. Such a, it's probably the second best looking helmet out there, I think. It's just absolutely stunning. But even better than that is the cheaper helmet, which is like the polycarbonate version called the status. And it's exactly the same shape as the aircraft and colorways, I think they're almost even better. Have a look at them on screen and see what you guys think. Can you tell any difference between the super high-end carbon one and the price point option? I actually think that is the way that all manufacturers should be doing this stuff now. And the price point stuff is starting to look better than the high-end stuff. Bravo, 100%. Something we mentioned on the show a couple of weeks ago was we'd seen pictures of Jeff Gullovich riding a Focus bike. And that was on Michaela Gatto's Instagram stories and it's now been confirmed he has signed for Focus bikes for 2018. And the bike he's mainly gonna be riding is the SAM. So that's the 160 mil travel enduro bike with 170 mil travel up on the front there. And interesting on here's one, instead of running air shocks on it, he's actually got a coil shock on there, the Fox X2. That is a seriously nice looking full carbon fiber bike. Something that's really cool actually about that particular bike is it comes with a six year warranty on the frame. So no quibble warranty from the German manufacturer there. Something really good. I do wonder though, will he be riding their e-bike version of the Focus SAM? That'd be quite cool to see what he can get up to on that. Alongside other people like Wade Simmons, who's riding the Rocky Mountain option out there. Some seriously interesting stuff, I think, going on on the North Shore at the moment with e-bikes. Watch this space. Barcelona-based company that specialise entirely in carbon fibre production, Uno, which is hailed by Cesar Ojo, have just announced that they're going to actually be having a World Cup race team. And that's made up of Greg Williamson and Taylor Vernon. And they're going to be riding the absolutely stunning looking ever downhill bike, which is it's got to be one of the best looking bikes on the planet right now. Check out these images that we took when Neil checked out the bike when he was chatting to Cesar at the Andorra World Cup last year. Just look at the finish on this thing. This is like a work of art. Be interesting to see if these guys are going to start doing Enduros as well because got Uno have got a whole range of really capable looking bikes. I'm hoping to go and see them soon and see their carbon fiber production facility down in Barcelona. So more on that soon, hopefully. So do you guys know anything about Formula? They're quite famous in the world of brakes, but they also make some really good suspension products. Now recently, they've been in the press a bit with their Selva Enduro fork, which is a fully featured fork with adjustable compression, rebound, preload, all that sort of stuff. But on their Instagram pages in the last few weeks, they've been posting up some unusual things, like some prototype stickers on the arches of some of those forks. Now this has got me thinking, what could they do to make that fork better? Because if you look on screen now, you can see some shots of the existing Selva, which is just stunning. Look at the dials on the top of that fork. I've never seen anything that looks so nice as the production fork. That looks like an aftermarket hop-up that's been custom made. So, what could they be doing with that fork to make it even better? So I've got a theory here. The Nero downhill fork has got a triple air spring system on it. It's got positive and negative chambers in there to adjust the general feel of that fork. And then it's got a separate adjustable chamber for just for the end stroke of that fork. I reckon we're gonna see that coming in on that enduro fork. And if that's the case, that could be one of the plushest forks on the market. And I wanna have a look at that because I reckon that is gonna be seriously good tech. So Team Scott Velo Solutions have got some new changes for the 2018 season. So first up, they're gonna be using a lot of DMR stuff on their bikes. And that link clearly comes from Brendan Fairclough who helped design the DMR death grip handlebar grip. That's obviously the same name as his film that recently came out. So next up, the really interesting thing is they're gonna be running Boss suspension. So no more Fox for the Scott Velo Solutions team. Now, on the front of Brendan Fairclough's bike at Darkfest where Blake was riding recently, 
you could see a pair of the new Opsys inverted downhill forks. So as you know, most suspension forks have got the bigger lower legs with a brace on them, but these forks are designed like motorcycle forks with the bigger legs up top and the skinnier legs at the bottom. You say skinny, they're 42 millimeter stanchions. That is the biggest out there currently. Fox 40, they're 40 millimeters on those. So an extra two mil on those for the rigidity, fore and aft and the torsional stiffness. So that is a hell of a good looking fork with 220 millimeters of travel on there. And it's available in the 29 inch wheel version as well as the 27 and a half. And it's gonna come with the option of different offset crowns so riders can really tweak the handling of their bikes. Hope to be having a look at that fork in a lot of detail soon. So the Eagle Eye Democracy you might have seen at Baz Van Steenbergen who's got a really, really trick new hyper downhill bike. Now his particular bike, there were some leaked pictures a while back in a sort of a dazzle print finish on the Hyper Instagram page. But this new one he's got is completely polished. It's like a mirror, it's absolutely stunning. Now at a glance, it looks a little like the layout of a Trek Session bike. But look a little bit closer from the non-drive side and you'll notice that, I mean, for starters, it hasn't got the ABP, so the active braking pivot. That pivot is actually on the seat stage, so a little bit higher up than on the Trek version. And then down by the bottom bracket, there's a linkage that when the chainstay pivots up, the linkage drives the shock. Really nice sort of design there. So the shock is driven from both the top and the bottom. I wanna know a little bit more about that. I'm gonna do some homework and come back to you on it, but that is a really trick looking back end. So lastly in the news is something a little bit smaller. It's from Finish Line and it's their brand new tire sealant. Now this tire sealant has got some serious tech in it. It's way different to all the other ones. So it's non-adhesive, it's non-latex based, it's non-toxic, so that means it's safe for the environment. It's got Kevlar strands in it that seal up and mat to your tire and actually sort of can flex with it. But most interestingly, it never dries out. As well as having a really good sort of puncture sealing ability, it never dries out. So you can transfer this stuff from tire to tire. So technically, you buy a big drum of this stuff and you're never gonna need to buy any more. This could be one of the best tire sealants out there. We're gonna try some and we'll let you know how we get on. Okay, so now reader comments. Let's see what you guys were saying about last week's show. So first up is from Jacob Rowe. Hey, Jacob. Doddy, I love your bike tech enthusiasm and how you share it with us. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. As your brother in spirit, you're exactly the man I've been looking for. At the moment, I'm looking for a new rigid fork hardtail to celebrate the 90s. But I can hardly find anything out there. Do you know of any? Seems like the bike market tends to ignore everything between CX stroke gravel bikes and regular hardtails with front suspension. You're absolutely right. There's not many brands that do actually offer fully rigid bikes anymore. I mean, there are a lot of those smaller niche companies that do continue to do that, but they're quite hard to get hold of for most people. Now, Surly still make the Krampus and various other models. They do them in 27 and a half inch wheel and 29 inch also in plus size. So they've got quite a lot going on there. And those bikes have got that kind of niche feel, but they're a bit bigger on the scale of things. But also, if you prefer to go for a slightly bigger company, take a look at Kona. They make a bike called the Unit, which is exactly that, and they do two offerings in it. They do one as a single speed, so if you wanna fully keep it real on single speed and rigid, go for that one. And they obviously do one with gears as well. Really cool bikes, and they've got fairly similar geometry to the rest of the Kona hardtail range. So it's a modern bike, but with a sort of a retro kind of feel to it. Could probably do something quite cool with that, you know, tam all tires, do the modern retro thing. If you get anything, let us know. Send some pictures into a bike vault on GMBN. Love to see them. This is from Jonas. What about X Fuse and suspension for the Santa Cruz? Yeah, actually, you're right there because X Fusion makes some truly excellent suspension forks. And in fact, X Fusion, before they made suspension forks, made their business as making the internals for a lot of the major manufacturers out there who make suspension forks. So of course they're gonna make good stuff. They just fly under the radar a little bit. They're quite subtle. So they're definitely on my radar. I might be looking at stuff like DVO as well, even Suntour and Formula. The stuff the Formula have been dropping recently looks amazing. So we shall see. It's definitely gonna be different, that's for sure. Alex Schneider. Phil Johnson looks like a giant on his 1990 climb. It's crazy how much geometry has changed. Yeah, do you know what it is? Because I, th I think if you look back at that picture from last week's show of Phil, he, like, he dwarfs the bike. Back then it was all about having super small bikes and having a saddle hanging right out the frame and a long stem and narrow bars. The frame was like the most compact part of that bike. And of course now it's very different. The bike seems to be the biggest part of it and then you have a nice compact bar set up and a lower seat sort of position. So bikes really have changed over the years, but just look at that climb now, it's a work of art. In fact, Neil was in a bike shop 
earlier today and he sent me this picture that's on screen now of this stunning Klein Attitude. So the same bike, but this one is almost box fresh. So that bike, when it came out in 1990, weighed under 20 pounds. So at the time, I think it's probably the lightest XC production bike available and had the one piece mission control bar and stem on there with that stunning Klein fork. Work of art that was. Okay, so now it's time for Bike Cave. Unfortunately, Mr. Ashton is not here this week, so you're gonna have to wait till next week for him to start getting excited again with me. So it's just me this time. I'm gonna make up for it though, because you've got some wicked entries this week. Going straight in with Craig O'Boyle. So my Bike Cave is now finished with a bit of video instruction, and it's in Colorado Springs. Oh man, liking this. So you've got a nice pivot, it's at a Max 6, I think you've got hanging up there. I'm especially approving of your insulation in there. That is very nicely done. That looks like a toasty. Mind you, it's got to, got to be insulated, I guess. It's going to be quite cold up where you are. I love your mechanic stool with like the tool tray on the bottom of that. Oh, I've got to get me one of those. That's well trick. Love the workshop as well. Everything in there looks great. The cabinets, good vice. Nice sort of pegboard. Yes. Nice effort. Next up is from Donald Brehany. Sending these via Facebook so I can find an email address. The bike rack is my own design with old tires on the rack to sort of frame get marked. I was watching this week's tech show when I took the pics. <laughs> nice, I love the fact that your, your bike cave is your front room. That's brilliant. That just proves the point that you don't have to have a special place for your bikes. You don't need a shed, you don't need that stuff. You can put your bikes anywhere. I quite like the idea of that. So you're watching, you're watching me and Martin on the TV there and you're looking at your bikes at the same time. And that's pretty trick. I like the way you've used the rubber on the tires there. So recycling, upcycling, that's pretty smart. Nice work. Okay, so next up is from Rob Northam. Got a bike cave for you in my tiny apartment, but have a peek. Um, got a great little workshop with a sturdy workbench, places to hang all the hangable tools and 99% of the essentials. Oh, nice, I like the fact you've got a workbench. This is just the, sort of the arm that's bolted onto your actual work chest there. Oh, nice pictures. What camera have you got? These are nice. Car tires, you've got car tires in your apartment. Oh man, this is good. Got the road bike in there, mountain bike, nice lighting, oh, decent Allen keys, long handles. Oh. And you've even got me on your TV there as well, dedicated fan. Well into that, nice one, Rob. Next up is from Philip Reed. Hi, GMBN. After months of saving and planning, my new bike cave is finally complete. I hope you like it. Oh man, you have gone next level in this place. All painted white, you've got LEDs in the ceiling there. TV, sort of media station down the back, sort of like kitchen worktop units, rubber flooring, Vespa scooter, bikes everywhere. Oh man, helmet storage, shoe storage, Phil's man cave there. Oh, I love it, you've got your tax turbo trainer set up there with this sort of interactive setup. Oh, you've also got those hip lock, I can't remember what they're called, the hip lock locking things to hold your bike onto the wall. Wow, well, you got three of them. That's really good. That's a really secure item as well. They're sold, sold secure gold, I believe, aren't they? Very nice. Well into that. Nice work. Scott Holiday next. Uh, my bike cave, where I get away from the better half. <laughs> Hopefully she's not watching the show to hear you say that, mate. But, uh, oh, I approve. Loads of stickers. Oh, you must be into surfing as well. I see Mr. Zog's Sex Wax sticker down the back there. WD-40 bike in there. Stands. Fenix cleaner. Muck off all the stuff. Nice, that's a good length workbench you got there as well. And what's that, you've got the tumble dryer in there. Oh, that's good, I guess that kind of acts as a bit of heating in there too. Excellent. Completely loaded, mate. Like the Lapierre as well, and I like the fact you've locked it up with a decent lock. You'd be surprised how many people don't lock their bikes up with good locks. You're spending a couple of grand on a bike, what's a couple hundred quid on a lock? Just get them, man, just get decent locks. Lock your bikes up. Nice work. Okay, so the final one this week is from Stephen Saunders. The cars have been relegated to the driveway. My wife wasn't too impressed during the recent snowstorm we had and I wouldn't let her bring the car indoors. <laughs> nice work, Steve. Let's have a look at this bad boy. Oh my God, this is like a bike museum. One, two, three. Is that four Ibis Mojos you've got in there of various different ages? HD, HD3s, HD4 is that? You like green, don't you? Oh my God, look at the speck on that bike. The spank rims and green bars, DVO diamond fork. You've got all the tools apparently hanging up there. See leaf blowers, chainsaws. Is that a compressor under there? Yeah, generator as well. Really like your uh, tool cabinets. What make are they? 
let us know. I'm, I need some tool cabinets. I'd like to have a look at those. They look like really sturdy. Like in the number plates on the wall. Martin pointed number plates out last week, actually. He was saying, you know, behind every number plate, there's a really cool story of an old car somehow. That's nice to have that stuff up there. Oh, you've got an intense as well. God, how many bikes do you need? They were all super bikes. Dude, that is a hell of a workshop. Well into that. Oh, so that is enough bike case for this week. So please keep them coming in. Loving seeing all these different workshops, especially the ones that are so inappropriate, like the kitchen, for example, we had a few weeks back. Absolutely loved that. And his priority was in fact to move house to get a bit bigger workshop to work on his bike. Keep them coming in, in the comments below to the address on the screen. Don't forget to use the hashtag bike cave so I can find them easily and get them on next week's show. Now it's time for Rewind. This is the retro part of the weekly show where I get to geek out on seeing all your cool retro stuff. And if there's not enough of it, then I'm gonna start bringing out my retro stuff and telling you all about it. So, starting this week is Trevor Nelson. I wonder if that's Trevor Nelson, the Radio 1 DJ, is it? Hmm, probably not. Trevor, I love the show and I find all of the information invaluable. Wicked, good stuff. A friend of mine owns a used bike shop in Washington State. Okay, so I'm guessing you're not Trevor Nelson, I think you are then. And he came across this piece of ancient tech in for a local bike swap. I'd love to see what you think of it. Um, oh my God, that's uh, so, right. So before we go into this, this is the F Gervin Flex stem. So this was the first ever suspension stem on the market, but closely followed came the Allsop soft ride stem. And that is what this is. But the one that you've got on your in your hand here, that's got, it looks to me like it's the Richie version of that. So Richie also had that, and they used to run that on the World Cup cross-country bikes, the WCS bikes that Thomas Frischnitt, who now rides for Scott, used to ride back in the day. And also Henry Schernis, the Danish XC world champion. Wow, that's a bit of kit from the past. I bet that still works as well. Be terrifying, but good condition. That's a nice one. Cheers, Trevor. Like to see that. Next up is from Michael May. I just bought this shark fin for my retro Scott Elite racing build. Thought you'd appreciate it. It's still unopened in the original packaging. I don't know whether to open it or not. Oh man, do you know what? I think you've got to get it on that bike. I used to love a shark fin. So for all you people that are wondering what a shark fin was, it was a chainstay protector made by Shimano. This one was a Shimano XT model. It has the shape of a shark fin at the front. And back in the day when chain lines weren't very good, nor was tire clearance, and the spring basically in the rear mech wasn't that strong either, chains used to whip around all over the place. And if they weren't derailing, they'd sometimes get caught between the tire and the frame and wedge themselves in. And of course, with the rotation of the wheel, the tire would pull the chain in there. And that phenomenon was known as chain suck. There'd be different types of chain suck as well. You'd get the bad types, which would happen when a chain would get stuck on a sprocket and then wedge itself between the sprockets and the chain stay, which could take a gouge out of your frame. Or you'd get the other type where the chain would basically end up getting pulled into the tire there and a the shark fin, you'd run it so it just sits up against the side of the tire wall just to stop that. Nice little product. I reckon you've got to get it on that retro build. Although it's pretty rare to see one still packaged. I'd like to snap one of those up actually. That's pretty cool to see that. Next up is from Richard Mitten. Hello, first off, I'm more of a roadie, so be gentle. <laughs> of course, we like road bikes as well. You know, we've got friends who work on GCN. Over the summer, I was given this by my father-in-law as he no longer rides. I know it's an old mountain bike and that's about it. All right, so let's have a look at this then, Richard. Oh, you know what that is? That is a Hero Extreme. So that's a single pivot bike. Back in the day, so Hero or Haro make BMX bikes, a really good, well-known brand. And they had a massive push on the mountain bike scene for a while. And a, an interesting fact about Haro bikes was that Greg Minard used to race for them. And in fact, he was a 2003 World Downhill Champion riding a Haro at Laguno. But, it wasn't actually a Harrow. It was bashed up as one because that's who his sponsor was. But at the time, they didn't make a suitable frame. So it was an intense M1 SL bashed up as a Harrow. But it wasn't just the only brand that did that. So Mongoose had Brian Lopes also running an intense but bashed up as a Mongoose. And even John Tomac riding for Giant used to ride an intense M1 bashed up as a Giant. So many brands have done that in the past because the intense classic bike was one of the best bikes back in the day. Finally, we've got one from Jeremiah Smith. I still love riding these two, an intense Uzi from 2002, the Santa Cruz Bullet from 2002, and the Moorwood Izimu from 2008. Do you know what? You've got some serious bikes here, like absolutely loving all of these. But in particular for me, I mean, the intense, 
from that era, that colorway, that's what the racing team used to ride, you know, and Kovarik and all the other guys used to be on them. But that Morwood is a move. So Morwood are from South Africa. It was Patrick Morwood that used to produce those bikes. I've got one of their four cross frames. I think it's called the Endiza. So that's a four inch travel version of that exact bike. And I absolutely love it still. I've forgotten I have it still, in fact, until just then. Um, I'm gonna dig mine out and maybe I'll do a bit of a sort of a retro build on it. I love everything you've done on that bike. It looks like you've got an MRP ultra speed on there. I can't quite tell from this side because it's non drive side. Classic single pivot design, quite a high forward pivot on that, I seem to remember. The one that I rode back in the day was exactly the same as this, it was red, but it had a brake torsion arm. I don't know if you've ever ridden one on yours, Jeremiah. I'd like to know if you had, because I thought it worked really well with that torsion arm, but I found I kept clipping my heel on it the whole time, so it's quite low down, acting like, almost like a chainstay, I guess. But great, super nice bike that is, really into that. Man, some awesome bikes there, and some nice memories as well to sort of take a look at. Please continue sending that stuff in. And just like some of the earlier stuff in the show today, like Trevor sending in that Allsop soft ride stem made by Richie. I'd love to see some more bits and pieces, components, even stuff you see in bike shops and stuff floating around the world. Love to see more retro stuff. It's great because it's good to sort of check out all the cool tech now that we've got. That's where it came from. So it's good to sort of pay a little nod to that stuff. Send them in, we'll put them on the show next week. Okay, so now it's time for top mods. Had some really good ones coming in from you guys, but I wanna see more. So all of you guys that are upgrading your bikes, whether that's changing your handlebar grips or silencing your chain from chain slap, or even doing a full revalve on your shock, anything goes, whatever it is, I wanna see it and I wanna get all you guys to inspire everyone else to upgrade their bikes and do cool little custom things. So fire them in, send them to the email address on the screen, tag us on Instagram, tag us on Facebook, or post them to us on Facebook. And of course, you can tell us about them in the comments below, and we will get back to you. We wanna see every single one. But kicking off this week, the first one is from Jonas Foster, who's got his entry-level hardtail, and he wanted a little bit more suspension performance, so he's upgraded to a SR Suntour XPN fork, which is pretty good fork, actually. That's a good upgrade. And also, he's put a Renthal handlebar in there as well, so gone for the wider bars up front there. That makes a significant difference to how your bike feels. That's such a minor upgrade to do on a bike, but it makes a massive difference to the performance of your bike. That's a great example of a good top mod. Nice work, Jonas. Next up is from Elias Sandal. My name's Elias, and my dad and myself built a manual machine to help me learn to manual. I know it's not on my bike, but it's for my bike. I hope it counts as a top mod. We've overbuilt it a little bit though, because it weighs 40 to 50 kilograms. Flipping heck, yeah, that's a lot of wood. Do you know what, I love this idea. I've not tried one of these. I mean, I, I did learn to manual quite a few years ago, but I can definitely see the benefit of how you would learn to manual one of these. I think we might have to build one here just to do a little bit of an experiment, and I think that's really, really good. But yeah, I think you've probably overbuilt it. Not a bad thing, but it's a lot of wood. Loads of wood. <laughs> Next up is from Karina Gunn. Hi Doddy, I thought you'd appreciate my chainstay protector. Oh, oh nice, you customised that as well. So it's a vinyl wrap, and you cut it to size and also stick it up so like sticker bond. So it looks really cool. Um, she also says, uh, you can't see it, but I've stuck stickers on the back of my seat stay to ward off chain slap. That's a nice little extra there, good one. And also finishing off the, the back of the bike is a V-notch I've cut into my mud guard to stop it rubbing on a seat tube. I do notice, by the way, that you've got a better bike out of two bikes there. So your husband's Trek Slash is at the back. Well, actually, I shouldn't say better bike. That's a really, really good bike, but I love the fact you've got a pole. Those things are like next level. Really, really odd bikes. If you haven't heard of pole bikes, they're making these radical bikes of long wheelbase. This really is the future that companies like Mondraker started pushing back in 2012, and pole have taken this to the next level now. So check their bikes out, they're pretty radical. I love it, I love it. I love all these little modifications that people are doing. It's great, and I love that sticker bombing chain say, that looks really cool. Might have to do something similar with a bunch of our stickers, I think, in fact. And last one this week is from Giles Bolin. Hi Dolly, my name is Giles, I'm 18 years old and I'm from Belgium. Uh, today I've made my own bike stand with my grandfather. He did everything himself um, and I love it. It's more solid than a normal bike stand and now I can wash my bike and work on it easily. Hey, do you know what? That's really smart. So that slides into the hollow side, side of your crank. I get that, that's brilliant. So keeps the back wheel off the ground. You can cycle your bike through the gears. That's really, really neat. Hey, that's, you know what? that's one of the best mods I've seen yet. That is really, really good. Nice work, Giles. 
Okay, so that was the end of Top Mods this week. Some crackers in there. Please keep sending them in. I love seeing what you guys are customizing on your bikes. Okay, so now this is my favorite part of the show. This is Tech of the Week, where I get to geek out on the latest cool stuff. And also not just the latest cool stuff, some stuff that goes under the radar and it's been around. So the other day I was doing a video on changing the bearings on the back of my nuke proof. Good video for you guys to find out how to do that same process yourself at home. And we, we're supported by Park Tools here at GMBN. And of course they make tools for virtually everything. But what they didn't have for my particular bike is a bearing kit to get the bearings out in those real tight little places. So we've got park headset presses, bottom bracket presses, we've, we've got all the stuff they make. But I needed to get hold of this little bad boy. And this, this gets me like hot and clammy. This is a really nice little device. So this is from a little company called Rapid Racer Products. And it's basically a miniature bearing press. We've got two handles here on either side. And it comes with two lengths of threaded bar. One for tight spaces and one for bigger places. There's a whole selection of different sockets available to suit the cartridge bearings on your bike. You order those separately, but as part of the kit. Obviously, no kit can do every bike, so you specialize the ones for your bike. And if you wanna know how to do that, there's a simple chart on the website and it could advise you which ones will fit your bike. Or you can look on the actual cartridge bearings. If you look on the black seal, you'll see the little imprint there. There's a number on that, and that correlates to the spec of that bearing and of course the which adapters you need. Now these are super nice, the way they just slide together for sending the bearing home and of course for pushing it out in the first place. Really, really nice tool for the job. Not a sort of job you need to do that much annually, every couple of years, that sort of thing, but having a good tool for it, oh, absolutely love this sort of stuff. So smooth to use as well. Have you guys got a favorite tool? Let us know what it is, love to hear about it. Okay, so now it's time for bike build, except the only problem is I haven't yet got the bike to build. I'm guessing it's somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean at the moment in a plane or something like that. So when the frame does get here from Santa Cruz, it's the Santa Cruz Nomad in aluminium. Then we're gonna discuss all the sorts of stuff that's been going on the bike. But like I mentioned earlier from reader comments, I'm thinking a bit far left. I'm gonna look at some individual parts, some smaller brand stuff, some cheaper stuff. And I'm gonna be sort of spending the money wisely on that bike because I think you can do a really affordable build and spend good money in areas on things like wheels and suspension where you need to have that stuff. And I'm gonna cut a few corners on the rest of the bike to save money in places like the rear mech where really, what happens with the rear mech when you bash it in a crash? You break it, you have to replace it. So I'm not gonna be putting an expensive rear mech on there. I'd rather put an expensive shifter on there so I get the nice positive gear changing and save it for, let's just say an SLX rear mech, for example, and then put an XT shifter, all that sort of stuff. I'd love to know the sorts of things that you guys think I should be putting on there. Bear in mind what I said earlier, stuff like, if I can, I might avoid going to someone like RockShox or Fox in favor of looking at someone like X-Fusion. And I think actually that's a really good shout from the reader's suggestion earlier to look at X-Fusion, because not only do they make great stuff, it's cheap and it can be custom tuned. And custom tuning is definitely something that I'd like to look at with this bike, because it means I can put stuff on it that's not quite as good as the high-end stuff, but we can get it tuned so it rides just as good as the high-end stuff and that is being smart with where you spend money. So, until the bike turns up, I haven't actually got anything to show you, I'm afraid, so until next week, please let me know all that sort of stuff you'd love to see on there. Let's talk about brakes, bars, wheels, tires, disc brakes, suspension, you name it, I wanna hear it. Let us know in the comments. So that was the end of this week's GMBN Tech Show. Hopefully you guys love the show. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Let's get some stuff going. And more importantly, tell me about the stuff that you think I should be putting on the bike for the bike build. Please remember though, that I don't wanna start putting XTR and NV wheels and that on it. That's not the purpose of that. It's to show you guys you can do get a bike with that sort of effect, but not spending that amount of money. So for some more really cool tech videos, if you wanna see the differences that suspension adjustments make when you're out on the trail, click down here. I made that video when I was out in Spain with Blake, riding some really rough terrain, and we set the bike up in a variety of different ways so you can actually see the visible differences with and without volume spaces and stuff like that. It does make quite a big difference, you can plainly see it, so that's a good video to look at. Now the video I did yesterday was replacing bearings on a full suspension frame. So if you wanna check that one out, click up here and you get to see me use this tool that I love using so much. Of course, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there's great content coming at you every week.